Hey everyone, this is Miko again of Ready to Marry and to Mommy and today I will be answering the question Paano makakatiti sa pag-move school? Alright, so let me give you three things but before I do that, let me just mention to you that I'm sharing this not because I am an expert on budgeting and then homeschooling but I am sharing this to you because malalim yung bubot ko, okay? This because in the beginning, I was not matipig in pag-homeschool and kumbaga natutu ako. And what I will be sharing to you are not answers but basically my learnings, okay? Kung paano makakapagtipig sa pag-homeschool. So number one is that, make sure that you choose your provider wisely. There are a lot of providers and if you would just go through them one by one, you would realize that some of them would be the would offer you the same thing. However, there would be cheaper ones. So I just want you to do your research on that and um, find out who among the providers will just give you, you know, the same things. Okay, pero yung iba mas mura. Okay, hindi naman sobrang laki ng mura nila. Pero you know, a few hundreds, makatitig ka pa rin, di ba? Or, if you are totally ready and brave, I would encourage you to do independent homeschooling. Sa independent homeschooling kasi we are not enrolled to any provider or to any school. That means that there would be no tuition fee that you would be paying. Yes, pwede po yun. Later on, what you just need to do is to go to DepEd and to take um, a test to make sure that your um, kid passes the test. So for example, nag-independent homeschooling kayo from grades 1 to 3, you will go to DepEd, you will take the PEP test, and magtitake kayo ng test na pang grade 4. And if you pass the test, that means that you could go back na to our regular school or maybe later on enroll with a provider. So please check on that, alright? So nakakatipid talaga kayo Una, again, if you would choose your provider wisely. And number two, if you would aim for independent homeschooling. Number two is, makakatipid din kayo if as early as now, you would set your budget on homeschooling. And not only set, but stay on your budget. There's a difference between the two. Kasi kasi ako, nung umpisa, I was just, I have a, you know, I have a budget in mind, but I still not, I did not stay on that budget. So, magastos pa rin. So, set the budget and stay on the budget. Now, the question is, paano mo malalaman kung magkano ang budget mo sa homeschooling? I will ask the question to you, mommy. If your child would be enrolled in a regular school, for example, he enroll mo siya, magkano ba ang willing kang gastos eh? Willing ka ba na gumas ng 30,000, ng 10,000, ng 15,000? So if you are willing to spend, let's say, 15,000 with a regular school, so be it. That would be your budget in home school. Eh? Pwede nyo iset na gano'n. Or if you want, pwede nyo pang bawasan. Alright? Kung ang budget niya sa regular school is 10,000 every school year, then you could just make it, for example, 8,000 and then you save the extra 2,000. Right? So, yon. So, stay on the budget. That's very, very important. And the other thing that I did wrongly was at the beginning of our homeschooling, actually, hindi pa kami nagsisimula. My child was just maybe two or three years old. What I did was, I bought a lot of books and materials already. You would see me lining up in book fairs, in sa mga sales, sa mga bookstore. And what I did was, kahit two years old pa lang siya, I would buy books and materials that is already for four years old, for five years old. Kasi in my mind, ay magagamit ko to, ay magugustuhan niya to, ay nakakatawa naman to. So kahit hindi pa kailangan, binibili ko na siya. Now what happened was, when my son was already four or five, I realized that most of the books that I already invested, he didn't like <laughs> or he didn't appreciate. So, sayang. Sayang yung mga libro. Hindi niya pala to gusto. For example, kasi ako, when I was a kid, I love coloring books. So, ang dami ko nang binili coloring books. Yun pala, at the end of the day, you wouldn't want to color. 
you would just want to draw. Alright? So, yung mga ganitong bagay. So, my suggestion is, para makatipid kayo, you only buy books and materials that you would need for that particular school year. So, if your son, for example, Risen would be grade 1, God willing, by next school year, so, we only buy things that he will use for grade 1. Wala akong materials for grade 2, for grade 3. So, I would just really say, what will he need for this particular school year? And I would say to that, no matter how crazy beautiful the other materials are, pag hindi niya pa kailangan, I'm sorry, hindi ko talaga siya ipinigay. And lastly, paano mga kapagtipid sa whole school? Is you just have to acknowledge that these resources, the money that we have, these are not ours. These were only entrusted by God to us. Meaning, pinagkatiwala. Since it was, it is pinagkatiwala, how will you spend it? Kasi hindi naman sa'yo yung pera. Pinagkatiwala sa'yo. How will you make sure that if God will ask you, saan mo dinala yung pera na binigay ko sa'yo? You will have an answer that, Lord, I used it wisely. I used it for homeschooling and I made sure that I did not splurge or I did not use it to things that at the end was not useful to our homeschooling journey or to my son. Okay? So yun, sana nakatulong yung mga tips ko kung paano makakapagtipid sa homeschooling. So ulitin ko lang ha, choose a provider. If you're brave, be an independent homeschooler. I'm encouraging you consider that. And number two, make sure that you only buy things that you would need for that particular year. Okay? That's very, very important. Number three, peg a budget and stay. Stay on that peg budget. And lastly, acknowledge that these resources are from God and we are just God's words. Alright? So, thank you once again and this is Miko of Ready.